title of the next presentation, Structural Integrity of Endodontic Files Using Transient Thermography and Electronics. Yes, from this one. Please. I will present myself. And uh, it is my pleasure to deliver this presentation entitled A Structural Integrity of Endodontic Files Using Transient Thermography and Dead Currents. So, this is a brief outline of my talk. I will start by uh, stating the objectives, I will make an introduction, then I will present the materials and methods, and I will present the results and discussions, and finally, I will draw some conclusions. So, when we have a toothache, uh, possibly the doctor will have to remove the crown of the of the tooth and then using a mechanized system using endodontic files the infected living tissues will be removed and uh, sometimes uh, this epical, can, uh, epical root canal is very uh, uh, has, a, has a small curvature and those uh, endodontic files uh, must have high flexibility but uh, sometimes they fracture inside the root canal which is not the aim of course so the aim of this study is to contribute to the reduction of the number of fractured endodontic files in the clinical environment. So some uh, endodontic files will be studied in uh, the resistance to fatigue uh, uh, performance. And the, the other aim of the, the, search, the, object of the study is to search for innovative solutions in the timely detection of microcurves responsible for the fracture. So we will use uh, some iFlex endodontic files, uh, one named control memory and the, the other one electro discharge machining files uh, of different sizes and we simulated those files to fatigue in order to determine their resistance to fatigue life. And also we will assess the possibility of using non-destructive testing, namely uh, thermographic and eddy current in order to detect fatigue micro -packs uh, in, the, in the early stage. So the endodontic files differ in dimensions. So for instance, we have the nominal length that can be equal to 25 millimeters, but can also be equal to 25 or 30 millimeters. And the active length is 16 millimeters. And they are identified by the taper and also the T to diameter uh, uh, of the endodontic file. And also, the endodontic files differ on geometries. Uh, so the cross section can be, for instance, a square, a rectangle, uh, 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 a complex shape also. So it differs on geometries, on chemical compositions, on machine processes, and also in, in, and also in heat treatments. So those endodontic files are now made of nickel titanium alloys, which shows super elasticity for once and also shape memory effects. And typically we use rotational bending fatigue tests in order to assess its fatigue resistance. So, uh, using the eddy currents is a common practice in engineering maintenance. And for instance, in this wire with uh, a circular cross section, three uh, defects were introduced with different tests, as you can see, and the non-destructive non testing, uh, namely the eddy currents, detected all the defects uh, of, the, of the wire. And also, the thermographic uh, process is used in order to detect some defects and cavities in structures. And both were used in this investigation. 
So about the endodontic files, uh, we have tested the glide pad endodontic file and also the shaping endodontic file. The glide pad, as you can see, is more used for the coronal region and for the middle region, uh, region of the tooth, while the shaping uh, endodontic file is, is used typically for the apical region of the tooth. So we divided the study in three groups. Group A for IFLEX glide path with these uh, process parameters, and group B, uh, the IFLEX 1.5, this one, uh, with the, this uh, speed of rotation and distort, and also group C, uh, which are older endodontic files, IFLEX control memory with this uh, uh, test parameter. Uh, and the, the big difference in between the IFLEX control memory and the EDM are, are the, the, the manufacturing process. So this is obtained by the conventional machining, while these ones are obtained by electro discharge machining. And those endodontic files were inserted in uh, an apparatus that simulate the root canal with an angle of curvature equal to 20, 25 degrees and the radius of curvature equal to 4.7 millimeters. Here you can see the endodontic file with the colors and also the surface finish proper from the electro discharge machining uh, finish, as you can see. About the eddy currents, so the endodontic file uh, was uh, in the, in the endodontic, endodontic file, uh, five millimeters away from the tip, uh, defect was introduced, as you can see here. The defect is more or less a width equal to 0 0.35 millimeters and a depth equal to 0 0.1 millimeter. And we have tested this uh, defect, the detection of this defect, using the eddy currents. And we have also simulated the eddy currents using the ANSYS Maxwell software. In order to have a reference, we have defined also uh, defects in an EQ wire with a diameter of 0.6 millimeter and multiple, def multiple defects uh, were introduced 15 millimeters away from the tip and one millimeter length with the largest being 14 micrometers deep and another single defect 5.5 millimeters away from the tip uh, 0.2 millimeters wide and 100 micrometer deep. So, in order to test the endodontic files, uh, we have used two types of probes. We have used the absolute probe and the differential probe. The difference is uh, here we, we use only one coil, uh, and with the differential probe we use two, two uh, coils. And in this case, the signal to noise ratio is higher than in this case, and the region that is surveyed in this case is higher than in this case. The eddy currents, more or less, functions like this. Like this, we place an alternate current in this coil. The coil, the alternate coil, the, the alternate current will generate a, a, a primary magnetic field, and then the magnetic field will generate eddy currents, circular eddy currents in the surface of the component, and those eddy currents will generate a secondary uh, magnetic field uh, that will be detected by the equipment. So here you can see the endodontic files that were fixed. And here you can see the coils are here, as you can see. And those were defined with 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and 40 coils in order to, to assess the sensi sensibility of, the, uh, of the, the probes. And this plate uh, will then uh, dislocate in this direction with a scanning speed of 1.2 millimeters per second in order to detect, to try to detect the defect. Here you can see the XY uh, coordinate table that was designed specially for the experiments. And here you have the Nortec uh, equipment from, from Olympus that uh, furnish the alternate current and measures the impedance of the system. About the thermographic tests, we have used a uh, uh, thermographic camera here, the Flip T400 with a focal length equal to 8 cm and we have used the, the SmartView software in order to treat the thermographic images 
in order to detect and to determine the temperatures. We have used, as you can see here, tar board. The tar board has low conductivity, thermal conductivity, that is used to generate a window uh, only to see the endodontic file that is placed here and on the extremities of the endodontic file some grips were placed in order to furnish the current to the endodontic file and to eat the endodontic file and that uh, it will be detected by the thermographic camera. So uh, we have defined three moments for the test, the heating phase, the thermal equilibrium phase and the cooling phase. About the fatigue resistance uh, results. So we have tested, as I, I told you previously, three groups. We can see that group B that, uh, that uh, represents the files that are used to shape the ethical root canal uh, and were manufacture, manufactured with uh, the electrodischarge machining process, uh, showed the higher mechanical fatigue resistance than the files of group C that were used previously and those are conventionally machined and are called the control memory, control memory uh, endodontic files. The glide pad, as expected, as it is an endodontic file that is used for coronal vision and middle vision, has no uh, such uh, resistance to fatigue because it is not used for such uh, ranges of curvature and such uh, sharp uh, uh, and small radius. And here you can see the fracture surface of this endodontic file, where you can see the nucleation, the propagation vision, and then the final fracture that was obtained. So the main difference is the geometry of the cross section. So here again, one file has a, a more fatigue resistance than the control memory due to the geometrical cross section, and also due to the surface finish, which is better than the conventional machined uh, groups that insert stress concentrations and lower fatigue lives. About the thermographs, as you can see here, we have the, the endodontic file at the ambient temperature and then during the heating phase, the thermal equilibrium phase and the cooling phase, and as you can see, the defect was detected by this uh, technique. Concerning the eddy currents, here are the results for the absolute probe that we have used for the wire, that is the reference, and for the endodontic file. As we can see here, the absolute probe is able to detect the presence of the defects in the wire. As you can see here, the variance, variant, the, the, the variance of impedance that we have here. But in the case of the endodontic file, as you can see here, the probe impedance decreases with the inspected distance in, in approximately an exponential way uh, almost always stabilizing in the last third of the instrument here in this region. And in addition, it was found that the decay rate of the current increases with the ex excitation frequency. So here we have different excitation frequencies and the decay is higher for the green curve, as you can see. So in this case, as you can see, the eddy currents were not able to detect the defect. Okay? So, it was noted an abrupt reduction in the intensity of the eddy currents as the diameter decreases in the last third of the instrument and the probe no longer detects additional impedance variations. One explanation lies in the chronicity of the endodontic file as the amount of material decreases, so thus the intensity of the currents that are induced. And also, the eddy currents tend to describe a circular path while the rectangular cross-section of the instruments means that the currents tend to ignore the cutting edges where the defect was located. So the same result was confirmed, confirmed numerically. So here we can see the wire the, with the circular constant uh, radius cross-section. And here we can see the endodontic file with a defect. And here we can see that for the numerical simulation, the defects were detected for the wire, but for the endodontic file, it was not confirming that the, the experimental values that we have determined, determined previously. Also, for the, for the differential probe, the results were similar. So typically, we can detect the defects in the wire with a circular cross-section, but not with the uh, endodontic file with the conical shape 
that uh, defines the, the incident. So, to conclude, with regard to the application of thermography, it was possible to detect the defect, especially in the thermogram corresponding to the thermal equilibrium phase. The deep tests have shown that the late generation of the IFLEX in the Olympic files are more resistant than their predecessors, largely due to the electro discharge machine process used to produce them, and the eddy currents were not effective in the detection of a large artificial defect introduced in the Olympic file due to the dimensional and geometrical constraints of the instrument, namely its stepper. So that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, my colleague, for your interesting presentation. Mm -hmm. Any questions to Dr. Rui Martins? Yes, please. Um, I thank you for the presentation. It was very, uh, very interesting. Um, I have a question. If such files are, um, are tested during manufacturing or during operation also, they are, are there some uh, tests? Uh, yes, yes. So, uh, thank you for the question. The endodontic files are uh, tested um, as, uh, as built. So, they are built by manufacturers, namely IFLEX, uh, which is uh, an enterprise, a company from Switzerland. And uh, we buy those endodontic files and we tested those endodontic files uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an environment that is similar to the clinical uh, environment. So typically at room temperature and uh, with the torque and also the speed of rotation typically that is in uh, indicated by the manufacturers. So we have done that for the fatigue tests uh, and, and those were the results. So we have divided in three groups with the results that are shown in the, in the slides. Thank you. You're welcome. Any further questions to Dr. Martins? Yes, please. When you are measuring the, uh, the instrument with, with the coils, by the, the, with the air currents, you move the, the instrument on the right? Yes. Yes. But do you move it without rotating? Without rotating. Without rotating. Would it be, be possible or to improve or to correct the mistake if it moves along with the rotation of the, the elliptical of the instrument? Uh, we will have to see. I do not know. I can. I cannot answer you if the result will be different. Probably it will be not. I do not know. But the eddy currents typically uh, diminishes with the amount of material. So the endodontic file has a conical shape, and with uh, lower material, then the eddy currents generated will be lower, and also the cross section of the endodontic file is more or less a square or rectangular, and the eddy currents tend to ignore what is in the in the edges. Probably they can detect more uh, uh, if, if the defect is not placed there. But uh, it is a possibility I will have to, to see and probably to, to, to test. Yes, thank you very much for the suggestion. If you don't mind, I have one last question. Um, since you tested uh, for some kind of uh, stress fatigue or pathologic effect, the, the file, or rotating the bending, Yes, yes, rotation of the link. Was it uh, by any kind of lubricant? Or okay. That's a very good question. Because in the real operation, we there have is some lubricant. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. That, that's a very good question. In this case, we did not use lubricants. We, do, we did not use, uh, for instance, oil or something like that. Uh, the, the tests were, were, were done dry. Probably that reason for the the friction. The friction will be higher. The temperature will be higher, of course. Of course. But uh, 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 in this case, we did not, 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 not we did not uh, test it with the, the lubricant. It was much severe, much more severe, but uh, ensuring the safety. <laughs> yes, yes. Indeed. Thank you, Dr. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Next uh, presentation is by.